first of all, if you're out on the town, um, someone's looking pretty violent, that, that maybe you might be involved in a fight, what would you advise that person to do um, to avoid the situation? Now, my initial advice to anybody being in that situation would be to avoid a confrontation, which sometimes means walking away. But it also is about you know, not putting yourself in a dangerous position in the beginning um, to avoid those areas where you might feel there will be a confrontation. Newcastle City Council and Newcastle City Police have gone to great lengths and done a lot of work on providing safe corridors. And I can tell you that during the busy nights, the police patrol them regularly. This is um, uh, particularly pertinent at this time of year with a lot of um, Christmas parties and things. Do you think that people need to be particularly careful? I think they do. You know, I, I would encourage people to be careful any night that they're in town, but particularly at this time of year when we see more people out enjoying this good weather, you know, the relative warm weather, which they sometimes couple with celebrations involving alcohol. Those sort of things reduce inhibitions and can lead to you know, being confronted by th situations that they might not be able to handle. Um, do you feel like single punch crime and, and king hits as such are on the rise? Are you noticing that there seems to be more of that kind of violence going on? Well, without having the data, it would be very hard, be difficult to speculate about that. But certainly one of the things that does concern us is that the lack of understanding that one punch can change your life so dramatically. Mm. Um, what, what can police do about it? You've got special operations that focus on this type of thing? Yeah, from time to time we run special operations. Um, we do them on a local level or sometimes we coordinate across the state or across other commands, which puts extra police on the street um, trying to ensure the safety of people that might be out there, during, particularly during the evenings and particularly on those busy weekend nights. Tell us a bit about Operation Unite. Um, I know that it's this weekend, this series won't be going to air until next yeah. week, but just generally, can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, well, Operation Unite is not only a state-run operation, but it's a Australasian-run operation. It involves police in New Zealand and right across all the jurisdictions in Australia, um, uniting, and they, hence the name Unite, um, coming together to target alcohol-related violence on weekends. Um, and how much of this, these sort of king hit related, these sort of king hit crimes are related to alcohol and drug use? I'd say, you know, a high percentage of them are certainly a very, very high percentage of these king hit crimes would be related to alcohol consumption, both by the victim and by the offender. And that's something to remember too, that alcohol consumption isn't just about offending, it's also about victimisation. You make yourself far more vulnerable when you're intoxicated and severely intoxicated or even moderately intoxicated to being a victim of such a crime. Um, do you think that young people in particular understand what the consequences of a bit of a, a rumble can be? That, that you know, it might not necessarily just be a punch, but the, the consequences of that? Um, it's been well documented through research that you know, young people have trouble understanding the consequences of actions. And I guess the, the challenge for my generation and the ch challenge for generations to come is to continue that ed education process. Um, in terms of um, the actual sort of hit and then connecting with the concrete, um, do you think that, that young people sort of are just thinking about, you know, they might have seen movies and TV shows and things and it's all about having a bit of fun and having a bit of a fight, but they don't un actually understand that it can be the fall that actually kills? I think you're right about that. I think people don't understand that. It's not necessarily the, the punch, the fist that comes into contact with someone else's body that causes all the damage. It's the actual falling onto a hard surface that can have dire consequences. And I also think that, you know, when you watch, you know, I watch some of these things in the movies and television where there's multiple blows with, you know, from individuals that are very strong and people get up again and continue the drama, um, that's not really based on reality. I guess just finally, what, what would you say to the, it's particularly young men out there who, who do get drunk and think that they want to have a bit of fun and, and get into a fight, what would your advice be to them? Look, I think when you go out you need to have a plan about whether, when you're drinking and your plan should be about trying to avoid those confrontational situations. To go out, drink to your limit, have a good time, but certainly don't go past your limit and put, draw yourself into those dangerous situations. You've just you've been with the force for 25 years. You've obviously seen some of the sad consequences. Yes, that would be right. Um, uh, um, tell me about um, 
how it how it feels to be on the scene when something like that has happened and and the and the impact on those people's families yeah look, it, it's a natural instinct for police to put themselves back in the same situation and think about their own families and i've done that several times and wondered how i would cope with having once someone i care about been left with some permanent injury and on the other side someone i care about who might be getting charged with very serious offences that will affect their future. Um, we often look about the victims of these yep. crimes and, and the impact on them but um, it's also the perpetrators and their families who um, you know are affected by, by this. Yeah of course they are you know these, these things you know go right through families not only the person that's charged but their parents their loved ones their significant others who are impacted on the, by the court system and by dealing with the grief that they suffer because of what's occurred. Yeah, cool. Thank you. But, but not, that doesn't, that's not to minimise the um, impact that it has on the victims directly themselves and their families, who often have to live with the consequences of that for the rest of their lives.